The simplest functions in mathematics are linear functions. And a linear function is a function of this form, f of x equals mx plus b. The, the letter m in this context represents uh, the slope. And the letter b is the y-coordinate of the y-intercept. Now this, uh, this comes from the equation of a line. The equation of a line is written in this form, y equals mx plus b. This is the more familiar form that, the, or this is a form that you might be more familiar with. But in, in mathematics, in, in modern times, we deal with functions now. We, we emphasize less equations. So we don't deal so much with the equation of a line. We deal with the function of, the, of a line. Here, the y and f of x are the same thing. When we deal with function notation, we're just basically we're just replacing y with the symbol f of x. In this notation, the the name of the function is f. That's the name. The letter x is the input. This is the input value. You plug in a number, you plug in x. The, the, the number that we plug in, we're calling it x in, in this case. So you plug in this number x, and what you get back is this. This is the transformation that, that's done. Uh, it's, it's mx plus b. So I take that number x, and I multiply it by m, and then I add b to it. And so mx plus b is the output. Another way of saying the output is that f of x is the output. So f of x this is the output, which is y. y is the second coordinate. The first coordinate is input, the second coordinate is output. And so what this means is that when you when you graph this, the the points on the graph, this is a line, so it'll look something like this, uh, potentially look something like that. The, the points on the line, they have x and y coordinates, so x comma y. Well, y is mx plus b. That's what this says right here. Or if you think of it, f of x equals mx plus b. So the second coordinate is, it, generically it's called y, but when you're dealing with a, with a specific function, then it takes on a specific value, and the value is dependent on x. So actually, points on the line have the form x comma f of x. Or another way to write this, since f of x is mx plus b, we, would, we could write it as x comma mx plus b. This right here is what a generic point on the graph looks like. This is, um, in, when I write it in this form, f of x equals mx plus b, I'm writing, this is function notation. In terms of the graph, the points on the graph look like this, x comma f of x, which would be mx plus b in this case. So these are generic points on the graph, an arbitrary point, a point whose, whose specific coordinates I don't know, I would label it as x comma f of x or x comma mx plus b. When I'm talking about the function, I would write it in this form. This is like an algebraic version of this. Down here we have, we have, the, we have the graphical uh, form of it. f of x equals mx plus b would be the algebraic form. Well, the fact is that a function of the form mx plus b, we know that this is a line because of the we know this formula y equals mx plus b. That's the equation of a line, of a non-vertical line. All, all non-vertical lines can be put into the form mx plus b, and so all non-vertical lines are functions. And, and so we're gonna, I'm not going to deal with uh, equations of the line in this class. I'm going to deal with the function form. So let's uh, take a look at finding the function form of a line. So let's just take a, an example. Suppose I want to find the function, whose gra the linear function whose graph goes through these points, minus 3, 7, and say 2, and uh, 11. So I have a linear function, and it goes through these two points. It's important that we're dealing with a linear function right now. If it wasn't a linear function, I wouldn't be able to find it. But a linear function is determined by two points. A line is geometrically determined by two points, so this is all I need to know. This makes sense because a linear function has the form f of x equals mx plus b. And the, the, the numbers that I'm looking for to, to define this specific line are m and b. These are the unknowns for me. x is not an unknown in this problem. 
uh, the lines differ from each other by having different values of m and different values of b. But every equation of a line, every function of a line, has an x in it. We're not finding x. We're finding the letter m and the letter b. So I need two pieces. There's two unknowns, so I need two pieces of information, and that's what I have right here. I have two points. So first thing I want to do is find my slope. The slope uh, is given by the, the famous formula. You just subtract the y-coordinates. 7 minus 11 divided by subtract the x coordinates. It doesn't matter which ones you do first, provided you're consistent when you do the subtraction. So now I have m equals 7 minus 11 divided by minus 3 minus 2. I want to find that specific value, so 7 minus 11 is minus 4. Minus 3 minus 2 is minus 5, and so I get 4 fifths. So that's the, the slope of this line. The next thing I need to do is find b. So I'm just going to write f of x equals 4 fifths x plus b. Now I want to find what b is. I'm going to use one of these two points. It doesn't matter which point you use, um, but I, I need to use one of these two points to find b. Now since minus 3, 7 is on the, the graph of f, then this means that when x is negative 3, so f of negative 3 equals 7. That's an algebraic interpretation of what of this geometric fact. This point is on the graph. Minus 3, 7 is on the graph of f. It's on the line. And that means that the x and y coordinates are related to each other by this process right here. This is true for all functions. It has nothing to do with the line right now. This is true for every function. Whenever I give you a point on a function, then I know that the x and y coordinates are related in this fashion. f of the x coordinate equals the y coordinate. And this is an equation. And this equation is going to allow me to find b. Because when I, when I plug in negative 3 for x up here, I'm going to take that negative 3 and plug it in for x. This is what I get. I get 4 fifths times negative 3 plus b equals 7. That's an equation. And this is an easy equation to solve. It's a, I just need to solve it for b. It's very easy because it's linear in b. Well, 4 fifths times negative 3 is negative 12 fifths plus b equals 7. Now I add 12 fifths to both sides. So b equals 7, which is um, 80, oh, sorry, 35 fifths, not 84. 7 is uh, 35 fifths plus 12 fifths. And so what I get is that b equals um, b equals 47 fifths. Now, it's very easy to make a mistake, especially when you're dealing with fractions. And so making an arithmetic mistake doesn't mean you don't know what you're doing. It's just for humans, it's, we, we, get into, we, we rush these problems. We want to get it done. And so we make these uh, simple mistakes. Very easy to make a mistake. I don't think I've made a mistake, though. So f of x, so my actual equation is a uh, function of the line is f of x equals 4 fifths x plus 47 fifths. That's the answer. So note this process that we had to go through. First, we had to find what m is. And we had to do some arithmetic and some, and some simplification to find m. Then we plugged m in, into the definition of the function. We just replaced the m right here with that 4 fifths. And I had to find b. And that's when I used uh, one, of, one of these points. I use the fact that minus 3, 7 is on the graph. And what that means is that when x is negative 3, the output is 7. So I plugged in negative 3 for x, and then I, I solved for uh, b. You get an equation involving b, and then I just solve it for b. And we had to do a little bit of work here. We had to do a, a number of steps to find what b is and, and to simplify it. So I, I, I know everyone has done this process before. This, is, this shouldn't be anything new uh, for you in this class. So... I, I, wanna, I want to dissect this process for you because what I'm going to do is I'm going to do this on Mathematica and I'm going to show you how easy it is to do on Mathematica. And what we're going to do is we're going to erase some of the, the, the painful part. We're going to erase this part right here. This part is going to go go away. So we're, gonna, we're, we're not going to uh, do this part. Mathematica will do that part. Mathematica will do this part right here. So we're going to we're going to skip the hard parts. We're just going to tell Mathematica to do the hard parts and this will make things uh easier for us to do. Also, it'll also make it so that we don't make any mistakes. Now, 
there's two drawbacks with this. One is you have to know how to use Mathematica. And it's, it can be a little bit of a pain to get started with Mathematica, but once you get the hang of it, it does make life simpler. The other potential drawback is that you really need to know what's going on. You need to conceptually know what, what's happening. So the emphasis now isn't going to be on doing the hard part, doing the, the not the hard part, but doing the nitty gritty, the, the, um, the busy work, the stuff that I hate personally. We're not, to, we're not going to concentrate on that, but we're going to concentrate on the concepts, conceptually what is happening. And so I'm just going to mimic these steps, but I'm going to do it in Mathematica. So let's take a look at a Mathematica notebook. Let me go down. Let's get my Mathematica notebook. And all non-vertical lines can be put in the form f of x equals mx plus b. So what we're going to do is define a Mathematica function uh, to a Mathematica function that um, that encapsulates this information. So I'm going to go f bracket x underscore. Don't forget the underscore. It's very important. So the name of the function is f, and then I put brackets and then x underscore, because we're defining a function, colon equals, and then m space x, so m times x, plus b. Now note that the m, f, and b are in blue letters. They're, they're colored differently. They're not in the, the black font. And the reason for that is because Mathematica doesn't know what f, m, and b are. Now watch what happens when I hit shift return. That f changed to a black color because now Mathematica knows what F is. But it doesn't know what M and B is. This is a good thing. It shouldn't know what M and B is. If if the M and B are regular font colors, then you need to um, clear M and B, and I'll show you how to do that in, in a bit. So F of X equals MX plus B. So let's look at this example. We want to find the linear function whose graph goes through, goes through the points 3, comma, negative 2, and negative 1, 2. So what I do right here is I just write M equals because that's um, the slope. So the slope equals, and then I subtract the y-coordinates. So I'm going to go minus 2, minus 2, divided by 3, minus, and then minus 1. Don't forget to put it in the parentheses. So that's the slope. And I just hit Shift, Enter. And it's done the work for me. That turns out to be negative 1. OK, so now that we have m equals negative 1, now we need to find what b is. And we're going to use the fact that 3 comma negative 2 is on the graph of f. And this means that when x is 3, y is negative 2. Or in other words, f of 3 equals negative 2. That's an equation. f of 3 is an expression involving b. We can verify that by just typing f of 3 and hitting enter. f of 3 is b minus 3. So this is an expression involving b. So when I, when I go f of 3 equals negative 2 right here, this is an equation involving b, and we need to solve that equation for b. So I just write solve f of uh, 3 equals equals negative 2. Use the palette if you don't know the notation, but it's a double equals. If you put single equals, you get an error. And I want to solve this for, for b. And I just hit shift return. And then it tells me that b equals negative 1. So I'm going to write b equals negative 1. Yeah, equals 1, not negative 1. Hit Shift, Enter. And then now when I type f of x, I, it gives me minus x plus 1. That's the equation of the line. You have to go through this part right here because when you solve the equation, it just tells you what b is. The solution is b equals negative 1, but Mathematica didn't actually set b equal to negative 1. It just tells you that that was the value of b that gives you the answer. So down here, I had to tell it that b is, neg is 1, and then, and then when I type in f of x, it tells me the answer is minus x plus 1. That's the equation of the line. Well, let's look at another uh, problem. So right here, I'm going, to, um, I'm going to start the process over again. But the first thing I need to do is I need to clear the values of m and b. So I need to get rid of them from memory. And you notice that when I press shift return, the, the letters turn to blue again, because now Mathematica doesn't know what m and b are. So now I'm going to go through the same process. I'm going to say m is, and, and then I just use the slope formula. So I subtract the y-coordinates, minus 6, minus negative 1, and then 17.6, 17.6, minus, minus 9. 
So that's what m is. And now I want to find what b is, so I solve the equation f of 17.6. It doesn't matter which point you use. f of 17.6 equals equals negative 6. And I want to solve that for b. And that's what b equals. And so I'm going to uh, copy this. And then I'm just going to set b equals that value. I'm going to paste the literal. Shift enter, and then when I type in f of x, it'll tell me what the equation of the line is. It's minus 0.18796 blah 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 x minus 2.69. You know, goes to however many decimal places you want it to go. So this is very simple. This uh, this problem would be a lot more difficult to do by hand because it involves decimals. So we see here that is if you know the concepts, if you know conceptually what's going on, Mathematica makes doing the problem very easy. It's a lot easier to do a problem uh, like this in Mathematica than it is by hand. And also you're less likely to make a mistake, provided you don't make a mistake on the syntax, like you don't make any mistakes up here, that you're solving for the right letter. You're not solving for x, you're solving for b. There is no x in this problem. So there's so there's, there would be nothing to solve for. Like you'd get an error if you put x, because there would be no x in it. So you, you have to know that concept. You have to know conceptually what you're doing, what you need, what value you need, what calculation you need to be done. So we're letting Mathematica handle the, the, the painful part of those calculations. And we're just telling you what numbers we actually need, what calculation we want it to do. We don't actually have to do the calculation, but we need to know what calculation needs to be done. And so now our focus is on conceptually what is happening rather than doing the, the dirty work. The, the, the painful work. So once, I, I know it's painful to get started with Mathematica, but once you get in the hang of it, uh, things really are a lot easier in using Mathematica than doing it by hand. So here, here are some problems for you to work on. Try doing them in Mathematica. Um, you know, get used, to, get used to using Mathematica. The only way to, to get proficient with it is to use it. Go through the same process I did in, on these problems and, and, and then find the answers to them. Uh, don't forget to use this clear command every time you do a problem. Hit clear MB. That's very important. You want to clear those values for each problem because you don't want to use the previous value of M or the previous value of B.